I was born in Joke City. My father knew 500 jokes in a row. He could laugh at anything. But when I asked him about my mother, he said, that's not funny. Talking about funny, do you know why so little people die around here? Nobody has any bullets. The other day, a son came home to his parents and said, Listen, Mum and Dad, at last I have something to make you feel proud of me. I just got back from my compulsory medical checkup for my medical insurance at the hospital, and the doctor said, Congratulations! You're the first person with a new disease we have never seen before. So I asked him, What do you mean by congratulations? Are you going to cure me or what? Well, the doctor said, No. We don't know what it is, but it looks pretty terminal. So I asked him again, what do you mean by congratulations? Well, the doctor said, just for the record, we are going to give this disease your name. So, mum and dad, that's something to be proud of, isn't it? I'm going to make medical history. But then again, I'm going to die also. So goodbye, just consider me dead. And the son wanted to walk out. But his father stopped him, shouting angrily, Oi! You're not walking out on me and letting me pay for your funeral! Nobody laughed. Neither did I. I don't know. A good comedian should know when to stop. Or perhaps you're being too autobiographical. Uh. How long's she been asleep? Two days. She had a very exhausting boat trip. Does she ever wake up? Now and then. We go and wait for her sister at the harbour. Why don't you dump her somewhere? Take her home. She wants to find a job first. Well, then dump her at Social Security. No chance, no passport. You look stupid in that hat. Well, I'm her sister. Good evening. A couple of nights ago, I was by the harbour, just like a thousand others, looking for a boat and a new life. Two things happened. The boat sank, and suddenly she stood there. She told me she lost her sister and her suitcase. I wanted to tell her she could have my suitcase, but then she gave me a hat. When I offered her coffee, she fell asleep. When I offered her to stay at my apartment, she said she wanted to find a job first. When I offered her to show her around, she told me she only wanted to go back to the harbour. I'm afraid that when I tell her I'm falling in love with her, she'll jump in the water and disappear again. I'm afraid there's a serious case of terminal falling in love here. Ladies and gentlemen, I was practically born here in Joke City. My father knew 500 women and none of them were funny. Talking about funny, do you know why so few people die around here? Nobody has any bullets. The other day, some doctors opened my head and said I wouldn't make it to Christmas. Well, what else can a man do than believe the doctors? Since the Bible had no explanation for all these strange diseases, we made the doctors our new gods, didn't we? I wasn't going to make it till Christmas, so I had a problem. But the real problem was, how do I tell it to the one I love? Do I not return home? Do I kill myself? Do I drink myself a one-way ticket through the ozone? Well, what would you do? Said the first kangaroo, do you know what I want to do when I'm 65? I'm going to have a sex transformation and have myself changed into a giant Suzuki and take my whole family to see all seven wonders of the world. Oh, said the second kangaroo, when I'm 65, I'm going to have a sex transformation and I'm going to have myself changed into a giant Suzuki and fly to a wonderful tropical island. So wonderful that if Adam and Eve had known of this, there never would have been a Bible. Then the two little kangaroos turned to the third little kangaroo and asked him, what would you like to do? Well, I said, I can't wait till I'm 65. I don't want to be a giant Suzuki. I don't need a sex transformation. I have no islands to give. And I don't have to see the seven wonders of the world. Because right now, I'm looking at the only wonder I've ever seen. You. Yes, you. 
I'd give up my job, my island, and my giant Suzuki just to kiss you. Why wait till we're 65 when we can kiss now? Do you get it? Yeah. No, you don't. Or else you'd kiss me. Kiss me like I was the first Japanese kangaroo you'd ever seen. Hey! Hey! Kangaroo! Fuck off, you! Don't shout, you! Kangaroo! Fuck off, I told you! I gave you all the help I could possibly think of. I gave you Ephedron, I gave you Styrodol. I gave up my whole fucking life for you. My house, my friends, my privacy! Oh, damn! Now just let me kiss the kangaroo. Please, please, kiss, please, kiss the fucking... Five more days to Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Tout va bien with you too. And this is going to be the last Christmas of the century. But we can't have our messages delivered because all the postmen got scared of the melon rocks. But tonight here is special. We have found one very courageous postman and here he is. Give him a big hand. Tato. First card. Oh. This one's for you, from your son. Says he can't be delivered due to the fact that he's having an affair with his stork. Next. This one's from the secretary of the AA. Says all AA meetings have been cancelled due to the fact that nobody drinks anymore and hangs out at the DD instead. What's that? Do the dope, and that's a little brother of the EE for all those people who cannot know more. What's that? EE stands for the erotic experience. What's that? And this little last card is is an invitation to a Christmas party tonight! Party, party, party! But you all stay put, because I'm not going to give you an address! Don't go, don't leave me, don't go away, don't leave me here, don't let me wait, don't let me wait forever, don't wanna say, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say, what I never said before